Nancy Norway, and this is Nancy Norway Presents Windmills. I've chosen the theme windmills for three reasons. The first is that windmills are very beautiful. Everyone likes to see the windmill against the beautiful sky. And the people that will be on my show are beautiful people. Secondly, windmills are productive. If they're in the orange groves, they help bring up water to irrigate the groves, the trees. And they can also help grind grain at a mill. Out in the desert, they create electricity. So they're very productive, and the people that will be on my show are very productive people. The third reason I've chosen the theme windmills is because windmills are flexible. They have to shift with the wind in order to catch the wind. Sometimes life throws us curves that we don't want or expect, and we have to shift with the wind in order to keep going. The people that will be on my show will be people that have done this, that are making a positive contribution to the world around them. So for these three reasons, beauty, productivity, and flexibility, I've chosen the theme windmills. Would to God that all of our lives were beautiful like windmills. Hi, I'm Nancy Norway, and this is Nancy Norway Presents Windmills. Today we're going to talk about a musical pathway to the gospel. I have here as my guest Steve Liberti. And he's going to tell us about this fabulous ministry he has as a drummer, reaching people for the Lord with music. Mm -hmm. exactly. So let's start out with um, talk about your ministry. Well, uh, I'm a missionary with Proclaim International. And what Proclaim International does is we use music as a platform uh, to deliver the gospel. Wonderful. And predominantly in uh, Europe, the Balkans, Central Asia, North Africa, and then South America as well. Wow, worldwide ministry, awesome, awesome. So you, you take a band in and play Christian music, yeah, secular so music, both? That's a good question. Um, the, the ministry uses original and secular music. Awesome. Because really, the, the, the goal here is to gain an audience with people in various countries who would never step foot in a church right. or come to a kind of an overt uh, Christian event. So by using, uh, by not necessarily using contemporary Christian or that sort of a format, mm -hmm. uh, we're able to draw more people in because in, a country, in various countries in North Africa, for example, right. if you're using Christian music yeah, they with a come. Christian band, they won't come. So, so what we do is we partner with various ministry partners and national churches and church planners in various countries, and we help them organize uh, large-scale evangelistic events. And we provide the music, we help them with training, resources, post-event follow-up. And so, again, it's just a, a different and unique way to gain an audience with people and deliver the gospel right. through music and testimony and... Uh, Bible readings and whatever whatever it is we can kind of get away with depending on where we are. Yes, that's a good good point. When you say training, what do you mean? How do you train the local people? Yeah, well, there, um, for example, a, a church planter in a country like Albania mm -hmm. just may not have uh, the, the, the knowledge or wherewithal resources to for pull sure off yeah. a large-scale event like right. that. So we help them with, okay, well, you know, how are we going to promote this event, number mm -hmm. one? You know, how are we going to uh, secure a venue where people mm -hmm. can come? And then most importantly, how are we going to attack, you know, follow-up? Because right. this needs to be a sustainable ministry. It right. can't be kind of can commando, dump and run. Right, So it has Very to be sustainable. Good. So what happens after the event? How is the church or the church planter going to, to reach these people once they've had an exposure to the gospel, oh, whether right. that's... Uh, follow-up church services or a free meal sometimes oh uh, wonderful you know coffee gatherings that sort of thing oh that's great yeah. wow how long have you been doing this uh, my first uh, mission with proclaim was in 2005 great so about four or five years now that's awesome mm -hmm. sounds like a wonderful ministry it is I mean uh, my first short-term trip with proclaim was in 2005 to Macedonia Oh. And uh, it was definitely a life-changing event for me. But, you know, then that's part of my story. So, uh -huh. but go ahead. How did that work? Just tell us about that one yeah. so we'll have an idea. Yeah, well, I, I learned about Proclaim International through another missionary 
who was a full-time staffer, who was actually in the Sacramento area, um, uh, in front of a church body, who was talking to the body uh, about what the ministry is, how it works, how God nice. works through it. And then he's also looking for, um, he, was, he was recruiting for musicians for short-term missions as well. Great. So I talked to him after the service, and I thought, wow, what an amazing way to serve, um, you know, awesome. using the gifts that God has given you, you know. Uh -huh. And, and uh, so I looked into it, and then about, that was 2004, about a year later, I, I got a specific request for, for a short-term mission to Macedonia, and, you know, with the support of my wife, and obviously oh, the, the power of the Lord, we found a way to make it work, and, and it, changed, it changed the direction of our lives. Oh, that's awesome. So one thing the audience needs to know mm -hmm. is that Steve is a world-class drummer. So he's been drumming since he was little, and this is an awesome opportunity for him to use his skills as a drummer. <laughs> drumming you can see what he does as part of the band so you would have a band then right you would be part of yeah absolutely places. yeah okay. so so as we as we prepare and work with the ministry partners uh, throughout the country uh, whatever country that is uh, we bring a, a, a group in a group of musicians and the music that we play again is original and, and secular appropriate secular music right and um, so the team, the team comes in, um, again, it has to be culturally relevant music as well. I was just going to say, that's yeah. very important. You, yeah. you can't like, play the wrong kind of music or the people won't come. Yeah, well, the interesting thing is, you know, in, in Balkan countries and even North Africa and, of course, you know, Eastern and Western Europe, jazz and, mm -hmm. and blues, very popular okay. genres. And so okay. um, it works really well. So um, uh, the event, again, is promoted. You know, we... we People come in by the hundreds, mm -hmm. and, and depending on where wow. we are, they come in, in large numbers. Uh, we play music, and then between musical selections, we'll share personal testimonies from oh, members of the band. Nice. Uh, we'll talk about our faith and what does that look like, look like, and you know what what uh, our kind of share our personal journeys. You know. And, Good. Why don't you give us your testimony right now? That so we'll know what you shared in between uh -huh. numbers. Okay, uh, well, um, I grew up uh, in a family that was of the Jehovah Witness faith. Oh. And so that, um, that experience left me very much closed and hard-hearted to anything that had anything to do with God or religion whatsoever. Oh. So for the next few decades, I basically um, was in the world as a musician as well and so okay. that led me down some paths that I shouldn't have gone mm -hmm. down for sure so but um, in uh, 1999 2000 uh, I married wife, my wife Dawn nice. and she here picture picture time okay yeah, okay good. don't know if we can focus on this this is his family and it's his wife Dawn yes and two girls yes. tell us about them well Dawn obviously has the good looks in the family and uh, uh, our daughters are uh, Bianca on the left, Sophia on the right. Bianca is eight, Sophia is six. Great. And they're beautiful girls. And we're, yes, we're they are. Yeah. So Don stayed home with the girls when you went to Macedonia then? Or? For that particular mission, yes. But uh, she's been with you other times? She's gone to uh, Germany with the team. Great. And so she's experienced what the mission is about. Oh, that's awesome. What it looks like. So she can be supportive from the heart. And, yeah. You know, that this is great. Yeah. And who kept the kids? Grandparents? We were lucky because we have a really you know, wonderful network of friends okay. and people from the church <laughs> and parents who are willing to you know, watch on the weekend and a couple days during awesome. the week. So they were shipped around a little bit. But <laughs> They probably you know, had a ball. <laughs> They spoiled everywhere. <laughs> okay, I didn't want to say the spoiled word, but you did. So, but they were. Yeah. So that's good. So God took care of them as well mm -hmm. as you. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and so, um, so you got saved um, uh -huh. in 2000, 2000, and then 2004 you heard the speaker 
Yes. And by 2005, you're in Macedonia. Uh -huh. And since then, um, I know you can't talk about every place you've been, but you've been to several of those places you mentioned, right? That's yes. awesome. Yeah. And I imagine, too, the audiences are different wherever you go. Like, some are more receptive than others. Yeah, for example, ministry in North Africa, predominantly Muslim oh. countries. Yeah. And, um, you know, there, uh, there's great opposition there yes. you know, to, to the gospel. Right. And, but here is really the beauty of the ministry is that, you know, you can be an evangelical in, in North African, certain North African countries. Um, and there are churches present. However, ministry and, and outreach beyond the walls of those churches is non-existent. Right. And so, you know, typical outreach events that a church would put on, you know, here in the States just yeah, don't work Yeah, you can't there. do. Right. So this is where the beauty of the, 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 the platform of music is really a wonderful tool because we can draw people into a venue mm -hmm. and then... Uh, you know, share our beliefs and our, our values and our testimony and, and how we feel about our loving relationship with our with our Father God, and so it opens up all kinds of great conversation and and uh, you know, and it's a non-threatening you know acceptable way. Great to, to, to evangelize yeah. those communities. And those conversations are important because, from what I know from my other friends that have been in North Africa and places where the gospel, let me, let's say, hasn't been real prevalent. Uh -huh. A lot of those people have questions. They want to know yes. what is, who is Jesus anyway? Why is he important? I mean, the Quran talks about Jesus too, yeah. but it's a different spin on Jesus than the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so they often have very valid questions and they want to know. Mm -hmm. So that's great. And then you can answer questions and, and become you know, in a dialogue with them, and that's seed planted. That's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. After after the concert event is over, yes, um, we seek out conversations yes. with people that awesome. have attended, and that way we can get more personal and launch into you know conversations about spiritual deeper things. Right. And then also, that's another opportunity to link that person who's in front of you to the ministry partner, mm -hmm. so that again, it's you know the mm -hmm. ministry is sustainable. And, uh, you know, there, there can be repeat kind of exposures to, to the people that are trying to evangelize the community. Right. That that's here. awesome. Yeah. Well, so let's just say you were in, oh, let's pick Eastern Europe for now. Let's okay. pick at Macedonia. Uh -huh. If somebody wanted to know what the gospel was, mm -hmm. what would you tell them? Yeah. Specifics. Well, I think it, it would depend on who I'm in front of. You know, if it's a Muslim person... You know, I would probably just talk about my relationship with with God and how it's one uh, that it's a loving. It is a relationship. It's a loving relationship. It's one uh, where I submit to the Lord out of love versus out of duty. Uh, yes, um, big difference. I'll talk, big difference. I, and, I'll, it, it, and a lot of that really just come is born out of just sharing my testimony. Let me tell you about the life I was living. You know, uh -huh. ten years ago. And let me tell you about the person who I was, and uh -huh. you know what my values are, were, what my, um, you know, what the things that I invested, you know, where was I, what was I doing with my time and my money, and and uh, you know, what was my marriage like, and you know, what was my relationship with my kids, and you know, how has wow. that all changed? So and, all of that changed because of Jesus. Well, sure. And then, Praise the Lord. And so That's then awesome. that that invokes <laughs> questions from from the other person. Yeah. And then I can say, well, let me tell you why it's changed. And let me tell you, you know, who, you know, let me tell you a little bit about Jesus and, you know, the right. relationship I have with him now. So depending on who I'm, who I'm in front of, I can take, you know, kind of different different ways to mm -hmm. approach. And, but part of it is just establishing relationships. A lot of times it's best for me just to be quiet and, listen. and just ask questions yeah. and listen. Because, yeah, that's true. You know. Find out about them. Yeah. And then at some point they may say something or have a question where you can just yeah. like go right into where they yeah. really want to know. Yeah, because if That's you neat. you know you don't want to necessarily try to shove no, as much you information don't do as you right. can down their throats. You know, right. you want to be bold, and yeah. assertive, and intentional. Yeah. But you know you want to start to develop relationships so that you know I'm just not somebody who's in front of them just throwing Bible verses right. or whatever at them. But that you honestly hear their, their questions and their concerns. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. That's neat. So the most rewarding aspects to your ministry is all this one-on-one -on -one with the people after the concert or also playing the drums? 
Well, I mean, you know, it's 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 <laughs> all of it. it. It's all just wonderful and a blessing. But obviously, I think the the most rewarding part is when, um, probably in this order, when when I have a conversation with somebody, you know, we join God's work in progress, right? Uh -huh. So God and the Holy Spirit have been working and yeah, pursuing that's a people good concept. before good concept. we've even got there. Yes. Okay, so. If someone, if I'm in front of somebody and they're receptive, and you know, I'll ask them if I feel if I'm, you know, if the spirit leads me, and I, you know, I feel like you know they want to start a relationship with Jesus, I'll ask them. So when you get to pray with somebody, yeah, you know, for the first that's time, the best. I mean, that is the best, right? <laughs> that is. And then, secondly, you you know, we know that we're there to again build up and multiply the church. You know, whether uh -huh. that's again a national church, a church planner. You know, some missionary group of some sort. So we're 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 building God's kingdom. Okay? Right, because Matthew says, you know, make disciples as you That's go, right. make disciples. That's so right. you don't want them to just get saved and it'd be like having a baby and putting it on the doorstep and saying good That's luck, right. kid. Yeah, exactly. So you, you want them yeah. followed up. You want yeah. them taught in the things of the Lord and, and loving people, caring for yeah. them. Now the music um, is. Fun. You know, a love, yeah. and a passion, <laughs> and a God-given gift, and that's you know that's just a bonus. Uh -huh. Music is not the gospel. Uh -huh. Again, I see it as a, it's tool. a vessel. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Now you told me when I was talking to you before that before you became a Christian, you had actually lost your passion for music, mm -hmm. and then Jesus rekindled all that. That's right. Well, I mean, I spent a few decades in the world and uh, pursuing you know, affirmation and accolades, and, uh, you know, kind of good the, luck. What, I, all <laughs> the I can, world's not good about that. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, what's the point of, to me, this was my attitude. What's the point of being a musician and pursuing excellence? You know, what's the goal of that? The goal right. was to, you know, gain kind of, you know, like I said, accolades from people and, and, and affirmation. And that just was an empty, that's empty, right. right? And so at some point, you know, even though I didn't, wasn't a believer at that point, it just felt like, you know, what's the point of all this? Right. I was, I'm burned out, and it, it doesn't, you know, I, I don't get this. And now you have a purpose for it, yeah. purpose driven or whatever. Yeah. You know, you, you want to reach people, you want to talk to them about Jesus, you want to let them know that Jesus died on the cross for their sins, that... Yeah. He took their sins as well as our sins, and if they ask him into their heart or if they put their faith in him, however you want to say it in mm -hmm. words, yeah. that claim that for themselves, then they too can have the assurance of eternal life. I think that's a big deal, the assurance of eternal life. I just read a book by an ex-Muslim terrorist uh -huh. turned evangelical Christian. Oh, wow. And he said, you know, he was out there bombing with the best of them in Palestine or whatever, okay. So he said, basically, the terrorists live in terror. They have to do these things. Mm -hmm. It's the only way they have assurance of getting to heaven. That's and right. even then they're not so sure. That's right. And he said once he became a Christian, it was all different. He had the assurance of his salvation. That's right. He had peace, love, joy, all those things that the terrorists don't have. And it was a huge, huge change in his life. Mm -hmm. He went through, I think, like five years of sort of inward shakeup because he had been so programmed for this other path. And then he really changed, but he he just says, you know, as a terrorist, I, I lived in fear constantly. Yeah, yeah. And there is a big difference with Jesus being love, peace, and joy. Yeah. I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind saying a prayer right now. Maybe there's somebody out there that's listening to mm -hmm. this that hasn't met Jesus personally yet, and we're going to give you a chance right now. Steve's going to say a prayer, and if you pray along with that in your heart, then you can meet Jesus too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Lord, um, we don't know who's, who's watching right now, who's listening right now, but I just pray that, uh, that your spirit is at work and that um, if there's someone who's watching this program at this point right now, Lord, and they, they just feel lost and, and uh, they want to pursue a relationship with you, that they would pray and that they would pray to uh, open their hearts to you, God, to accept your free gift of salvation, that they can come to know you in, in an intimate uh, and loving uh, way, Lord, that you can be the rock in their life, that they would turn away from, from sin, that they would repent, and then they, they would accept the grace 
that uh, you would freely give them, Lord. So I just pray for uh, whoever it is that might be watching. And uh, I pray that they would, um, after saying this prayer, Lord, that they would seek out a church or someone from a church and just begin to uh, read their Bible and start to understand what a life lived in you is all about, Lord. It is so amazing, such a wonderful um, way to live. So I pray for uh, Nancy and then also uh, those who are watching. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So if you ask Jesus to come into your heart, what he said is to read your Bible, start in John, Gospel of John is good, and buy a Bible at the bookstore if you don't have one. Find a church that preaches from the Bible, or a friend of yours if you know they're a Christian, and ask him, now what? Because it's a wonderful life with the Lord once you find him. Mm -hmm. And ask somebody to tell you about the Holy Spirit too. Because you'll find out right away that living the Christian life is impossible. You can't be perfect as God is perfect in other commands in the Bible. But you can get his help and you ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit and then he helps you live the Christian life and it's supernaturally natural so that's the way to to do it not trying on your own so find somebody who knows about that and then just be open to God's leading and guiding in your life this is a wonderful thing this this music ministry it's just like changing the lives of people all over the world and this is fabulous, and this is wonderful how God's using you and your wife and, and kids in this way. And do you have anything else that you'd like to add or, or talk about? What the well, future might be for those people over there, or just yeah. anything you, you'd want to add? Well, um, uh, there's a couple things on my heart, just real quick. And, and you know, uh, having been to um, North Africa the last couple of years, you know, mm -hmm. I've, I've got a burden for Muslim people. And so I would just say that as there is tremendous immigration into the United States and Canada and then uh, also Europe, yes, true. that I, I, would, I would just appeal to people to reject the notion that it's not time to, to, to hide the women and children. I mean, we shouldn't buy provisions and build a bomb shelter. When God brings Muslim people into our own backyard, and we have an opportunity to reach them outside the typical mm -hmm. Islamic cultural context. Right, this is a right. gift from the Lord. Right. And that we would be very purposeful and intentional right. and educate ourselves in, in what Muslims believe. What does the Quran say about Jesus? Where are right. some, com where's some common ground that we could start? And um, seek out opportunities mm -hmm. to minister to Muslim people. So that's, that's just something that's you know, that's great. Right now. I think a lot of people are afraid to do that because they don't know how. Yeah. Like for me, reading that book was a total eye opener uh -huh. as to what they really believe. So I think that's the first step for Christians to yeah. find out what on earth yeah. the Muslims are taught. And some are, of course, more um, extreme than others. Some are just your moderate Muslim that he's Muslim by culture exactly. or whatever. Yeah. They're yeah. actually easier to reach, I yeah, think. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but the ones that are really into the Quran and know it all, they. Right become more extreme because that's what's mandated in right. the Quran. And finding those things out helps right. you, I think, in reaching out to Yeah, people. absolutely. And I'm not sure if you're going to put the website. Oh, what's your website? website? Just say what it is. Well, www.proclaiminternational.com. Good. And then the second thing I would say would be, if you're a musician who knows the Lord now, and that you're interested in using your gift in a short-term mission with Proclaim, go to the website. To kind okay. of find out what we're all about. There, there's a PDF application process. Uh, oh, wonderful! On there, and so you know, explore okay. that. Use your gifts for the Lord. Oh, that's great! www.proclaiminternational.com. Um, yes, ma'am. Okay, that's great, and that's what you did. You you got the that's form, exactly and yeah, right. yep. that's great. Okay, so I would like to say something. I was in one of those North African countries too, uh -huh. and I went to a secular concert when I was there, and it was amazing. I have never seen so many people packed into a square, uh -huh. maybe 5,000 at uh -huh. least, uh -huh. and they were all into the music. And I remember thinking, you know, this is just your regular old secular Arabic music. And they were just having wonderful, wonderful time uh -huh. 
jumping and hopping and, and singing along with it. And, and I was just like, wow. So I can just see how this, this music mm -hmm. would really, really reach them. That's right. And that's just such a wonderful thing to, to get it all out there. Now, does Proclaim International also help with, like, do they take equipment, like drums or speakers or things like that over to these countries? Or is it just you bring it in and you pack it out? Depending on the country, I mean, Proclaim has their own gear, and so depending on where we are, we'll bring our own production uh -huh, right. thing, and then, and, pack then, it out. and then pack it out. But if we're in a North African country, we typically will rent the equipment. Oh, okay. Which can be kind okay. of interesting sometimes. So they have but, equipment there already. Okay. Yeah. So it's not about that they don't have any equipment in these countries. They have. Oh yeah, they absolutely oh, do. Okay. There are times, okay. and I'm not sure if you're trying to get to this, but we'll we'll bring stuff in to give away yeah. to, to churches and ministry partners. Like I've heard maybe equipped. in Russia sometimes they may, not, they may need some equipment, some of the latest. Yeah, things. absolutely, you know, and then, you know, we didn't talk about one of the other things, if I may, just real quick. Um, one of the other things that we do, um, Proclaim is much more multifaceted than we have time to talk about here now, but one of the other things that we do, particularly in North Africa, is to conduct training conferences. Oh, nice. Training nationals, and, you know, indigenous people to, uh -huh. to get out from the walls of their church uh -huh. and, reach out. and reach out themselves, you know. So, very dangerous in North Africa, but well, very good. It is, but it can be done in a, in a, in a safe yet bold and effective way. Awesome. So, you know, we go in there and we train them, you know, this is how, this is what it looks like. And so, that's wonderful. So we conduct the conference and members wow, of the conference will follow great. us around the country yes. and see how we do it. Yeah. And then that way, you know, it's they have just a good obviously idea expanding the ministry. Oh, that's potential. wonderful. That is just absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Steve, yeah. for sharing all this about Proclaim International yes. and our prayers will be with you and your family thank you. as you continue to minister. I know before that, that you were telling me you were right now in deputation yes. preparing to leave for overseas service on a full-time basis. That's right. And that's great. So you're gearing up, getting ready to go, mm -hmm. and it'll be quite an amazing thing. And I just thank you so much for sharing all this with us, and may the Lord bless you. Well, thank and you. I'd like to thank you all for coming today and, and seeing, hearing about Proclaim International. And if there's anybody out there that wants to go on music ministry around the world, go to www.proclaiminternational.com and sign up. <laughs> Thank you very much.